So this is an overdrive pedal. You may have heard of these. You may own some. You may own more than one. If you're like me, you have a bunch and you've been through a bunch trying to find the perfect overdrive. And perhaps the reason you haven't been able to find the perfect overdrive is because maybe you need to learn a little bit more about the best way to get them to align with your rig and create the sound you want to get. For me, an overdrive pedal has always been about being an extension of my single channel amplifier. That's sort of what I've always liked. Single, single channel amplifiers like Fenders, my Two Rocks, a Marshall, um, ways to actually add gain to the sound that you already have. Like I said, it's truly an extension. And that's why you see players with two, three, or more of them on a board because they're getting different flavors from these to really create their own sound. So there's a lot of choices out there for sure in the overdrive world, but if you understand some basic concepts of what you can find inside an overdrive pedal, you can really make an educated decision when you want to try one or you want to add one to your rig. We're going to take this pedal from a company called Westco Pedals. They're friends of mine out in California, and this overdrive pedal is called the Blue Highway. Now, real quickly, the guys that make this pedal are Bob Daspit and Kurt Biscara. They're actually really accomplished musicians. Kurt's a touring drummer, a studio drummer. He's played with everybody from Mick Jagger to Sarah McLachlan and more. Uh, and Bob has really done a lot of great stuff in TV and film. He's produced Sammy Hagar records. So these are real deal musicians that created a little pedal company, and I like them a lot and I wanted to help them, you know, sort of get their product out. And this is a great pedal that's going to really help display a lot of the things you'll find in many overdrive pedals on the market. We're going to break it down into three sections. We're going to talk about really aligning the volume of your pedal with your guitar and starting from scratch. Then we're also going to talk about how to really get the most out of your EQ and tone controls. And then we're going to talk about the clipping stages of pedals and how that's become such a thing nowadays. Soft clipping, clipping stages, clipping diodes, what you do when you engage one, all that kind of stuff we're going to talk about. So before we jump in and talk about the pedal and do some basic overdrive concept stuff, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, you can grab the track and the link links below. You can also grab a sale link for my membership. It's a monthly subscription that gets you hundreds of lessons, all the tracks and tabs you could want, and I update it monthly as well as host a monthly Zoom call with all of you subscribers. So if you check my subscriber account, you can see that we're almost at 50,000 subscribers, and I want to celebrate that achievement. It's a really hard thing to do when you're starting from scratch. I'm a one-man show here. And we're going to give away a guitar, and it's going to be this one, this GNL ASAC Classic. This is going to be the prize for somebody that enters this contest. All you got to do is hit the link below. You drop in your email. I'm not going to sell your email. I don't even know how to do that. I don't keep any information because you don't give us any personal information, just the email. That's the way we contact you if you win. We'll never do it in YouTube. We'll never do it in the comments. A lot of spam, a lot of bots are out there doing that kind of thing. And believe me, I have no interest in doing that kind of thing. So this GNL ASAC Classic is going to go to one of you guys. And when you enter, you can do some really fun things like you can check out links for the guitar and you can also subscribe to the channel to help boost your standing in the contest. Check the link, enter to win the guitar. All right, so let's jump in and talk about some overdrive tips. I think you're going to be really equipped by the end of this video to grab any overdrive pedal off the shelf, plug it in and get great tones. All right, let's check it out. So before we jump in, let's talk about the rig. I'm going to play this GNL ASAC Classic because this is the one I'm giving away. This very guitar. Details below about all that. You heard me talk about it earlier. So this is obviously a Tele style guitar uh, going into the Blue Highway Overdrive, into my old Fender Princeton, out of the Princeton, into the Oxbox, and that allows me to record the amp direct without any microphones and still get a great sound. And a little bit about the amplifiers, because I hear some of you say, well, you have a you know an old Princeton, not everybody does, or you have a two rock, not everyone does. When you're in this digital domain and you're shrinking the, the sound down for you all to hear it on the internet or on your phone or whatever, it's very, very you know negligible differences, I have to tell you. Um, I've used Blues Juniors, my 100 watt Marshall, the two rock, a Princeton, and I'm generally getting a similar tone in the digital domain. I know that sounds weird, but it's a much different experience when you're in the room in person when the amp's roaring at you, as opposed to this digital world where we're shrinking it down so that you can listen to it the way we are. Now, the reason I like to use the low wattage Fender is because it gets up, uh, it gets to, you know, to volume quickly. It's a one knob volume control. We're all pretty familiar with the way Fender amps sound. New Fenders, Hot Rod Deluxes, Blues Juniors, they're all still going for that vintage Fender sound anyway. So 
kind of doesn't matter what I'm using. I know somebody's going to beat me up in the comments, but trust me, I've been doing this a long time, and I listen to guitar through headphones and speakers in the studio a lot, and the difference is negligible in this domain. Okay? We're going to get some great sounds, so sit back and relax. All right, so we're going to talk about actually how to get you know, your guitar volume to match your pedal volume, that's, a first, that's the first place we wanna start. So let's do that. So the first thing I like to do is get the volume of the pedal and the tone of the pedal to match or get really close to what I'm hearing from just the guitar and the amp. A lot of folks would refer to this as like a unity gain type of setting. Unity gain basically means there's no difference in your volume or tone when the product is engaged, okay? We're always gonna hear that a little bit, but I like to shoot for getting it as close as possible to start with. So the pedal's off, and if I just strum a chord. That's that classic Fender sound we're talking about. Now I'm gonna bring the pedal in. Pretty close, so I'll go back and forth. Ah, the amp's a little louder. So let's match that. We're gonna bring the volume control up. And we'll try to keep matching it. That's pretty close. Now oftentimes, you know, I'll hear that, oh, there's a little more low end from the pedal or not enough. And that's when I'll start making EQ adjustments. We're gonna do that in the next section of the video. I honestly can't really see where I'm at because I have to look in the computer monitor here. And then I can tell, because the pedal's on now. Pretty close. A little more low end bump when the pedal's in. That's okay. but very, very close. And you notice my drive is all the way down. So on my bottom here, I have volume and drive. And that's a great baseline to start from. And I also got that way because I was exploring the EQ knobs, which we're gonna talk about next. But if you can you know, take a simpler pedal, maybe that just has a tone control, you're gonna be able to dial it in on your own really easily. So we have volume and the gain is all the way down. The reason I like to start that way is when I kick the pedal in, transparent that's what's nice and and also the transparent overdrive conversation right that's what they mean to start with that's part of what they mean we're gonna get to other reasons why they say that too now I can start to bring the drive in and the drives gonna bring in volume and you're gonna hear it start to kick in I do have a single cold guitar turn the pedal off sorry I'm moving it around there it's kind of hard to do so it's just a little bit of drive happening right now, but you see it did boost the volume of the pedal. If I want to match it a little bit more, maybe I'll bring the volume back. And that's okay, but here's the problem. This is what we want to get away from. It was we don't want the pedal to sound like this where it's kind of fizzy and splatty, we want the volume to open the amplifier up a little bit. So, it sounds like the amp got turned up. A really great overdrive pedal for me, and what I like to do, is an extension of the amplifier, and I want it to sound like the amp got turned up. Somebody's over there, and they just turned a knob up for me a little bit. When that happens on a Fender-style amplifier, or most tube amps, we do get that breakup sound. <laughs> Maybe I'm playing a rhythm part. That's a really nice way to use overdrive, is just start to bring it in and make it act like the amplifier is just breaking up a little bit. Now, of course, we could continue to add more gain and we're gonna have to adjust the volume to do that. And notice how 
overdrive is meant to sound more like an amplifier. We're gonna talk about that as well. So if I were to, do, to take, let's see, this pedal off. And I turn the amplifier up a little bit. It's on about three and a half, which is pretty typical for a lot of fenders. They start breaking up a little bit past that. Starting to get a little overdrive there, a little more. Now it's getting more pedal-like, but I don't want that because I want the actual clean tone to be part of my sound. That's my little rhythm sound. Now I'm gonna add a lead sound. And you'll adjust the volume to taste, okay? So start with it getting as close to unity buzzword, uh, phrase, <laughs> as possible, okay? And then start to dial in your gain from there, all right? And this pedal has lots of headroom, which means volume. There's a lot of volume on tap, a lot of gain on tap. I used a ton of it in the beginning, and you'll see, if you go back and watch the performance, that different guitars, I had it, you know, cranked up for different things in different sections of the song, okay? But I'm always trying to make it match the initial guitar sound first. You don't want that volume to dip too low. It'll sound fizzy, it'll sound splatty, and it's really not going to help the amp open up and you know, lots of times they'll say bloom, right? So that's what you want this pedal to do. Push the amp, start to get it to speak a little bit more. I really like the sound of it down about halfway there. a little bit. Even less. Adjust my volume. So it's pushing the amp and it's actually getting it to breathe a little bit and it's not quite like turning the volume up. Actually, it's kind of even better. Um, so that's what a great overdrive pedal can do and what you can do when you start using one is what I really wanted to say. All right, so use that as a baseline and then take it from there. We wanna go through some typical EQ things you're gonna see in, in, in tone controls you'll see on pedals. And then we also wanna talk about that uh, new buzzword that's been around for a little while now called clipping. So let's talk about those things and uh, get a little bit more knowledge about how to set up our overdrive pedals. All right, let's do it. All right, so we got our volume matching happening pretty well here. I'm gonna turn the pedal on. You can hear it added some low end low mid to the signal that's okay with me and that's mostly coming from this bass knob here now what guitar pedal manufacturers do is um, oftentimes they'll take a bass circuit and put it into the drive section of the pedal so that you're actually adding low end to the drive portion of it as well and that can result in some cool like sort of fuzzy uh, tones when you start to crank up the gain that's kind of cool but if we take your, your tone controls, the first thing I recommend, pull it out of the box, turn the pedal on, let's dial up a little light drive, and spin them. Really listen to the range of the knob. You can hear as I turn it more clockwise, it's a little cloudier in the low end. And it's actually adding some distortion as well. I want it more, a little more defined, so I'm gonna roll it back. I turn the pedal off. We hear a little more definition when the pedal's off, so maybe we wanna pull this back. It's totally to taste. We definitely have some flexibility there, and I encourage you to really take that knob and play around with it. So let's dial up some more gain. And on these pedals that have the bass in the drive circuit, hear how it gets kind of fuzzy? that's kind of a fun added feature that you'll get in a drive circuit like this, okay? Something I just wanted to show you. Now in the, the high end section here, um, 
are high cut. It is indeed a high cut because we're going to be cutting the high frequencies as we roll this knob around. So let's go back to a little cleaner overdrive. It's an oxymoron, clean overdrive. I'm gonna roll some of the low end out. And as I move it backwards, counterclockwise, I'll actually get highs back. Because there's what's happening is there's a little filter in there that as I roll this knob, it's cutting high end. Why do you want this? Well, maybe you're going for a nice creamy overdrive, right? Neck pickup, you wanna play up here. Add the bass. See all that high end that's gone, but it was still very musical? If I bring it back. Much piercier, piercier. But it's a cool option, and if you know what your pedal's giving you, your brain and your ear can kind of say, oh, I gotta dial this knob back. Hear how much personality I'm getting out of one pedal and one knob and one guitar. So I'm having more low end, I wanna pull that back, I wanna pull this back now. Pull the bass even further. So I'm tweaking just ever so much and getting this wide range of overdriven tones just by using these EQ controls. Okay, really, really important. So. When I look at a pedal board, if somebody throws a pedal board that I've never seen, you give me five minutes, I'll have it figured out because I understand how this stuff works. My brain has taught my ear, do this, do that. Because you have to you know, dig into the manufacturer a little bit and see what these tone knobs are doing. Are they taking highs away? Are they adding? Are they boosting? Is the bass in the overdrive portion of the, of the chain of the pedal? All that stuff's really, really important and it all contributes to different kinds of tones, okay? So that's just a little feature, um, a little thing I wanted to mention on the features of your EQ on most overdrive pedals. Again, the reason I wanted to use this pedal, not only because the guys at Westco are my friends, they're great musicians that build pedals, it's really, really a cool marriage of that, but it had all of the sort of tropes of overdrive pedals, okay? And those are just two things, the unity gain and the EQ stuff that we really wanted to talk about. Let's talk a little bit more about things that you'll see in pedals nowadays and it'll help you make choices on which ones you want to purchase and how to use the ones you already own. All right, let's check that out. All right, so I pulled out my SG Junior. I use this in the track as well. Uh, I love this guitar. It's a rock and roll machine and we're going to do some more gain stuff, so I wanted to add it. I'm not going to use humbuckers. I know some of you guys will probably get on me for that, but the same concepts apply to all of it. So use your, your ear and use your judgment when you're playing with humbuckers as well um, because it's more about the pedal, not so much about the guitars. And you heard it in the intro too. This pedal sounds really good with all types of guitars. So. <laughs> Love this guitar, it sounds killer. I dialed up just a light amount of gain, um, and we're on a function here, you'll notice this switch here called clip. And what's become really popular is to really start to talk about soft clipping, hard clipping in overdrive pedals, all those kinds of buzzwords. And it's not just buzzwords, it's really, really important stuff. Because generally, when you're talking about an overdrive pedal that has soft clipping in it, you're talking about overdrives like this, Tube Screamers, uh, Greer Lightspeed, those kinds of pedals. Um, you know, there's a bunch of them I, I could think of off the top of my head. But what's happening is it's affecting the, the this sound wave or the audio is coming into the pedal and the diodes in it are clipping it in such a way that it's making it feel and sound more reminiscent of what a tube amplifier might do. And that's why these you know, transparent overdrive types of words get thrown around because they're trying to get it to sound like a tube amplifier via a pedal. Now the reason, uh, I'm not a huge tube screamer guy because typically they have this really pronounced mid-range which you've probably heard people talk about. And some of my favorites like this and the Greer Lightspeed, um, I like the JHS Morning Glory too is a nice one. Um, you know, stuff by uh, the Game Changer by, by Barber is really good. Um, I like those because they sound like I turn the amp up just like what we talked about earlier. So when we take a pedal like this 
and it has three different stages of clipping. What happens is the diodes that are in it are making it sound more compressed, more tube-like, adding more saturation and gain. So you can get a lot of stuff out of one pedal. In the middle here, in this first clipping stage, I'll turn the pedal off. We add that. It feels a lot to me like a tube amplifier. It's big, it's open. It's not compressed, it's got a great feel to it. I can play some nice jangly Tom Petty. So now if I go to another clipping stage, we're going to go to the second one on the left there. The volume usually dips. That's pretty, pretty much what happens when you change um, the clipping stage of a pedal. So you want to compensate with your volume control, but it has more compression, more sustain. If you want to use it as more of a lead pedal, you might want to engage those clipping stages. Now let's go to the third one and make sure I'm in tune. So these old guitars, sometimes they don't play nice. I'm in the third clipping phase here and that's going to do the same thing. It's going to continue to compress. I'll have to change my volume a little bit. Didn't have to do it too much there. But as I continue to turn the pedal up, I'm going to adjust as I turn gain up. I'll, you know, adjust my volume. That's an important thing to do. If I went back to clipping stage one, listen to this. You can feel it kind of get open and a little louder because we're not compressing with those clipping diodes as much as we were in the other stages. Okay, so oftentimes you'll see videos and people will talk about these buzzwords and they'll talk about you know, like I said, soft clipping, hard clipping, tube screamers versus rap pedals and DS1s and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to actually play a little bit and see, give you, talk about the sensation you'll get when you're playing an application. So, you know, if you want to really get a compressed lead tone, super rock, let's change the high end. I got the bass rolled way down. Maybe we'll bring it in a little bit. <laughs> It's a far cry from where we were earlier in the video. We'll give it all it's got. So we can really start to get some hard rock tones by doing that, playing with the clipping stages. So our three things that we've talked about so far are unity gain, matching volumes between guitar and pedal, or pedal and guitar, however you want to think about it going through our EQs, really exploring them and understanding what they give us uh, with regard to what the pedal's meant to, to deliver in, in its design. And then of course we wanted to talk about the clipping stages and all these things that they're putting or emphasizing more so in pedal builds nowadays. But for bonus, this pedal, like I said, it's got all the stuff we, we like to talk about in it, which has made it a good candidate for an educational moment here. Um, they'll often put a clean switch on here or, or a knob sometimes. And what, what, what that means is we have our original clean signal kind of riding along at the same time as the overdriven signal. Now I'll be honest, like that's not usually my favorite thing. I did use it in the solo in the beginning of the, uh, of the track when I used this guitar on the more high gain setting. I thought it sounded good because sometimes it'll kind of add a little more oomph for beef to your sound. It's kind of a very, very, very subtle thing which we may not even really hear, but you can feel it. 
So it's off right now. It's on right now. Let's turn it off. Put it on. When it's off, it definitely sounds like there's just guitar and the pedal tone. When it's on, again, you're probably not going to be able to hear it. It's hard for me to get. Ah. There's a little sparkle that happens on the top end. It's really subtle in this pedal, which I appreciate because in other pedals, to me, it's a little drastic. I think the old Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive had a knob. Um, my Cornerstone Gladio SC has that clean knob as well. And it's cool to kind of beef up every once in a while the tone that you're getting. And it's fun to experiment. But for the most part, I usually keep that kind of thing off. But once again, like I said, this pedal was a good choice because it had a lot of things we could talk about and educate about. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is the Blue Highway from West Co. Pedals, made by my friends out there in California. They're great musicians, and uh, you should go check them out. You've probably seen me play their envelope filter called the Grease Juicer, which I really like. Super fun pedal. But I'll leave you with this. Take your overdrive pedals out, experiment with them, spin the knobs, think about what we talked about, and you guys can win this GNL ASAC Classic. I'm going to put the links below. You guys can enter the contest. I talked about how you do that earlier in the video. It's a really great guitar. It is every bit as good as everything on the market in this price range. I'm really impressed with the sounds. And uh, we like to, you know, give something back because we're about to hit 50,000 subscribers here. And I thought this will be a great guitar to give away. Comes with a really nice gig bag. I'll ship it personally from my house to the lucky winner. And of course, we never announce on YouTube will always contact you directly through your email. Okay, hope you dug it. That was really fun to do, something I've wanted to do for a long time. And uh, let me know what you think. Tell me about your favorite settings and your favorite overdrive pedals in the comments. And uh, don't forget to download the track with the link below. All right, I'll talk to you soon with another fun lesson demo or anything under the sun when it pertains to these six strings. All right, see you next time.